My guess is that the people online will be more than the ones inside. I pray and hope. Um, my other hope is that um, now that the minister has said that uh, the rules have been relaxed, that you'll be able to invite your friends so that we are more. Our discussion is on the book of Joshua. And uh, the one thing we want to talk about is sin. Um, you can't talk about Christianity without talking about sin. Why? Because God is a righteous God and He hates sin. So if you talk about Him, you must first have to talk about holiness. And when you talk about holiness, you are talking about the opposite of sin. But I think the other thing is, because after the fall of man, there isn't a man or a woman who are not fallen into sin. Every one of us, that's the message of Romans 3.23, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us, all of us, um, me included. And I think that, that's why the topic is so important. We are going to the book of Joshua. Remember, the book of Joshua uh, is describing Israel's arrival on the promised land. They have spent 40 years moving around in the desert. And finally, Joshua is helping them into the promised land. The book also serves as a reminder of their faithfulness that many years ago, more than about 500 years previously, he promised Abraham that there was going to be a time when his people would be settled in Canaan. But it took another more than 500 years for that to happen. And 430 of those years, they were actually in Egypt. And that the book is reminding you that even if the promise takes long, God keeps promises. And then, as you go through the book, you give, he, it gives us the terms of God's covenant with Israel. What are the terms on which he operates? And today, our other thing is, if you really want to enjoy God's favor, it will be important that you don't allow sin in your life. One of the conditions in God's covenant with you is you live a righteous life. Chapter 7, verse 1 to 5, it's talking about this um, uh, fight the, with a small town called Ai, where Israel is defeated by a small, small town. Yet previously, they had just defeated a big fortified city called Jericho. So now they are in a small town and they actually beat them and killed them. That 6 to 9 is talking about the reaction or response of Joshua the leader to the embarrassment of having been beaten by a small town. So we see, we see him uh, humble and in prayer. Then verse 10 to 5, God instructs Joshua what to do. Now that you are in this fix, how do you come out of the fix? And then finally, in verse 16 to 26, we see Akan, the sinner, actually discovered and identified, and in the process, he and his family are actually um, actually destroyed. You know, if you have heard me before, you are likely to have me talk about the three G's. The three G's that bring down even the mightiest. I need to keep talking about them so that we don't become like Akan. You know, the three G's refers to the three things that through history have brought down the men of God. The first G is called the G of guys or girls. If you're a man, girls. If you're a boy, if you're a girl, uh, guys. And I want to tell you, don't just look at Akka. Look at yourself. How are you working carefully into dealing with sex? It kind of drop, it kind of drop down so many women and men. And you start thinking it's a joke. 
So when you think about Akka, think about the G of if you are a guy, you can say guy, guy, if you are a guy, you can say if you are a guy, you can say guy. The three the third G is the G of Yeah. So the question is, how are you managing it? The second G is the G of glory. The G of glory refers to power. We seem to be born in sin with a desire to control others. It's the G of glory, the G of power. And anybody who can promise you a big job, or if you get a job, big job, you hang on it for your dear life. And you can actually fall into sin because you don't want to let go of that glory. That's why, for example, politics becomes a very difficult game, mainly because of that glory. You feel like, if I go for five years, and I'm caught on the line, how can I drop it? So you do anything within in or out of the book, you have to retain that power. In the process, you end up in sin. For you, it's not becoming an MP. But it might be this power things that you are playing with your siblings or with other people in the office, and you do almost anything in order to retain power. That G also brings down many people. The last G is the G of glory or wealth. And that touches many of us. It's the one that touches Aiken. And you need to ask yourself, how are you handling the whole issue of wealth? What is the attitude to wealth? But maybe the best way of putting this is how do you define success? And I'm sure you have to that before. Because whatever you get a success, you work hard to achieve it. Is it wealth? Is it glory? Is it gold? You know, Achan took some of the spoil of Jericho, despite hearing clearly that the whole of Jericho was a condemned city. All the gold was not done at it. Then he says, wait a minute. If I got this, I can hide it. Who will ever know? That desire for property is what that brought down Achan. You know, here we talk about the love of the world. The love, the, the love of the world is the root of bitterness. The moment you have a clear desire for wealth, prepare yourself for bitterness and frustration and the can maybe destruction. We should take heed of sin ourselves. Don't let it about taken. Let thy sin it may be defiled, it may be defiled. What are those things? Take heed of having fellowship with sinners. Is that a thing that this book is telling us? Let him share in their guilt that like happened with his family. Because he didn't die alone, he died with his family. It concerns us to watch over one another. Now that you know this can be, if you see somebody who is getting caught up in well and is so desirous of what he is going there at a Nipoko speed that doesn't care about all the rules. If you really love them, tell them the truth. My brother, this route is not right. Just like if you see a boy who is always seen in popular institutions with girls, don't allow him to get up the trail. Maybe that's what I can should have had. You know, sin, other people's sin, may actually end up damaging you. You know, let's start with looking at verse 1. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Ethan, son of Kami, the son of Zimri, the son of Zera, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. That's what we have been, that's what we have been, we have been saying. Are you understanding that here, because of the reason we have given earlier, he thought he's a very God? Yeah, he said this, but it doesn't make sense. The same thing that happened in the Garden of, in the garden of Eden, he knew what God had said. But the God told him, ah, because you see God doesn't mean good for you. And that's exactly part of the problem. 
You know what the Bible says, you know what are the rules. But sometimes you start wondering, does he really God care about me? Since he can't care about me, let me look up for myself. Discipling, if you want to help somebody to disciple him in the Lord, is teaching him to obey God in all areas of his life. That's the thing that we want to do. It doesn't matter the attraction. The song we sing is trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus except trust and obey. So I think that's what this thing. Sin is lack of obedience. But you can't obey if you don't trust the one you're given instruction. Trust and obey. Obey God in all areas. If you trust and obey, you will conquer this G. It can't bother you. A woman who can have naked or not quite have naked. Maybe with a dress that is too low from above and too high from below and want to be very close to you. The moment you see it and you know yourself, you know you are buying karaoke. So you do not sit there. Why? You can see that the ability of disobeying God. And you love God and you trust God so much, you want to disobey Him. So a man will be a bad You call yourself a man and you are away from a woman. Now you don't mind what they think. They can think whatever they think on the way to hell. Because you are the way to heaven. That's where you want to reach to ask yourself. It's the same thing with the money. Surely, why you are fool? Una nabia paskio. Why you speak from your ears? I don't know what that is in English. Now, but, but the basic thing is, here is money free. Nobody can catch you. And you remember, I think they make me worthy on my way to hell. I'll try to remain poor on my way to heaven. That's really what we are talking about. A holy God will not be with you, not in fellowship with you, if you choose to disobey him. So the key word we need to know in this chapter is a can disobey God. The rest is actually a consequence of this action. Verse 2 says, now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near there, Adam, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go and spy out the region. So the men went out and spied out, out Ai. Then, we, we, when we did Joshua chapter 2, the same thing was seen. That you don't just jump into something. Oh, yes, yeah, that's more safety. So you go and, uh, and start fighting it. The Bible of God keeps repeating the importance of being proactive. Always thinking ahead. Don't hear that there is a man somewhere and a fly. First of all, who do diligence. Because it's a place of the money that you will discover it was stolen money and you are now handling stolen goods. And when they go to jail, you will not be far behind them. And all that happened is you quickly made a decision without due diligence. So when you have disobeyed God, but if you're not intended to disobey God, is that you didn't do due diligence. You need God's help, however, in order to do due diligence. Why? There are some things, even after you do your very best, you can't discover. For example, the way to spy to prepare for the fight. How do they have known that before they can even go to the safety, they should have checked themselves that they actually had disobeyed God either. No way were the spies going to discover that. So in the same way, even as they have done analysis of the thing you want to get involved in, of this guy who normally comes to church and when he sees his life, he's about to fly to our heaven. And then he proposes it to you. You don't even say, ah, I'm not thinking about it. Yes. Now, you are saying yes to a demon. You are not aware because you do not do deal challenges. You know, some, you know some of those people, you ask them, where do you come from? Some place in Nanda. Oh, some place in the coast. They don't want to tell you the exact place, isn't it? Now, and you say, can I, can I see your wedding? Some people actually reach the wedding day without seeing any wedding of the guy. Could they, when you are married, when you discover you are the guy wife? But the guy was so good. But you fail to do due diligence. And we're back in a compromising. Because they, they had a woman who would be saying, sure, why did you come up 
know you're my mother. I don't know what example you have in mind. When you feel that something is so urgent, my friend, you know something, somebody is pushing you and with that case, the pressure, there is something hidden. Nobody would want you to make a decision without thinking, if you have to, including a coalition agreement. It will be very important that you are given enough time to be in what you are going to, to sign. So all, all we are learning here is that Georgia will not have time. Just because you are talking in Jericho, he doesn't get to let go of how he can talk everywhere. No, he says, go and check. Then in that three we read, when they return to Joshua, they say, not all the army will have to go against AI. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and you will not marry the whole army. For only a few people live there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the kind of city they found, compared to the kind of city they conquered, just say, this is too small. You know, let me be clear, as you deal with various issues, in business, in spiritual issues, whatever. It is better to help with the enemy than the world is saving. So if you see, for example, this guy, he can't help me. So I can go to my room. Uh -uh. Start imagining she is not what she is looking. She may have a way of getting me. So when we enter her house, you see how I'm coming. And I will come another day when we are with another brother. You think I eat people? I don't want you to take a cup of, of tea. Now, if you think you are strong and you are a man, will you agree to go away? No, you will take the tea. Then the tea will lead you away. But it's very important to understand clearly it all has to do with underrating the enemy or underrating yourself. And many of the things we are involved it has to do with operating ourselves. Many times when I have fallen into sin myself, I always realize I underestimated the enemy or I overestimated my spiritual strength. The easy conquest of Jericho excited content of the enemy <laughs> and a disposition to expect the Lord who was in that in Jericho to all go everywhere. You know, this has to do with the gospel about grace. Many TV stations are teaching about grace. And sometimes when you listen to grace, it sounds like you don't even have to be a serious Christian. Because once you say you are saved, all of them go, once they go away, saved. That's what, that's what the temptation of this group. If God was be that in Jericho, he would be that in AI. No, 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 no. That is a misuse of grace. Men abuse the doctrine of divine grace in the process. They, they, they assume the promise of God must be kept by God, irrespective of what our fear ourselves are. In other words, they excuse their own souls and its own indulgence. How about you read Philippians, which says, We have to work out our salvation with the fear and trembling. It, it just means you have to be. It is through the grace of God that we feel. But it's also true that if you truly enjoy that grace, that grace will lead you to see your fears with the God. You cannot be living a careless life because there is grace. You know the book of <laughs> the Bible that our God says, they left us, they are not Christians, because they are not part of us from the beginning. And that means, if you actually are living an ungracious life, you are in sin. Let us be very clear. There is no grace you are enjoying. That's what these people discovered. The grace of God was in them in Jericho, but because they now are part, part of a sin, they were beaten by a small AI. And you need to understand the same. People like me have that, who have that tendency. God has worked with me, with me all these years uh, in January. In January, I was speaking at the Alliance. And when they were introducing, when the Deputy President was introducing, he said, Our speaker today was in Alliance, was the Chapel Prefect, 1972. Then the, the teachers were, were whispering to me, Do you know you were not born? <laughs> not the students, but the teachers, including the, including the Deputy. You know what we are going to hear? 
Já tem quem é, se não vai ter quem é, não vai ter quem é. A quem tem quem é, se não. Já tem quem é, se não vai ter quem é, se não vai ter quem é. I don't know what to do. We have been working with the Lord for our whole ten years. And we are talking to the Lord for now. We are one for it. Ah, not possible. I'm not that kind of, kind of person. That is misusing or misunderstanding the grace of God. Look at that four. So about 3,000 went up. Up to where to AI. But they were rooted by the men of AI who killed about that and six of them. They changed the Israelites from the city gate the stone quarries and struck them down on the ropes and this is the heart and this the heart of the people melted in fear and became like water let's be clear you are born with the battles you pass the exam you pass the photo you fly in colors and in fact you do get a percentage something gets into you today you are very clever about are you sure I'm not average when you see people struggling what is wrong with them and you are up. You have forgotten that it's called grace that has brought you to where you are now. So you start operating without that consciousness. You know, let's be clear. Without God, we are no match for the wicked to the world. Did you hear me? Without God, we are no match. I had one of my older friends to say, and I have uh, remembered it ever since. Whenever you see somebody you are already to see, always say, there go I, if it were not for the grace of God. None of us can go. We are not part of the devil. All you need is to be on your own and talk to the devil. You will be surprised. The kind of things you do, I don't know why, I don't know you will be surprised. I'm sure you are going to be surprised if you are going to keep your love without. To see yourself say something, you never imagine you have the capacity to say. Am I right? you discover it is the Lord who keeps you. Even a small enemy is too strong when God's favor is absent from us. That's why you walk with the Lord on a daily basis. Don't worry if I have been with you for over here. That's irrelevant. Am I with you? No. That's what can, that's the only thing that can keep me into the future years. We need to see where God comes in even in our mundane tasks. So ask yourself, how is God involved in my career? How is God involved in my, my friendships? How is God involved in my, uh, my family? How is God involved? God has to be involved in every area of your life. Then you will recognize that everything that God wears, you give glory to Him. I think that's what this uh, story is teaching us. Every time God's presence is up, out, you are in for defeat. Just look at verse 6. The Joseph from his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. You see, it has happened. The problem is not happening in such a small town. It's that the whole of Canaan is working. The power of getting off and let them know they are finished. <laughs> but now, if you can be defeated by AI, <laughs> come, Kuja, we'll handle you. Are you going to be that So the, the fear is not AI. The fear is what will happen next. The AI is finished. We go to action, Joshua knew for sure. Without God's presence, they are finished. But is that the way you feel? When you want to go on your way without God, do you realize the kind of trouble you bring to yourself? Joshua realized the absence of God in the mission means the failure or the end of the mission. But the good news is, Joshua teaches us the way back to God's presence is repentance. And he lies down, he attended, he had himself lies down on the floor, he is. Talk and hear that like we are finished. God, come to us. We are finished. Repent us. What is repentance? Three words. Number one, if you acknowledge you have not kept God's standards, without any excuses. Number two, is to having admitted you are guilty as such, is to ask God for His forgiveness. Number 
three. If you tell God you will train, you will not repeat that journey again. And that's exactly what Joshua is doing. Look at verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, so the Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us? If only you had been content to stay, to stay on the other side of the Jordan, pardon your servant Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been rooted by its enemies? Are you getting? Joshua is not even as worried about the fact that they are finished. He says, Your name is a stake. Let me ask you, when something goes wrong, do you think of your loss or God's name? Joshua is saying, Okay, we are going to talk ourselves. Beyond that, you are made. So you know that you call for forgiveness and help for his sake. It's for the sake of the name of the Lord. Leaders should not pass the back. It's one of the things I, I can see here. He accepts his part and parcel of whatever problem that is there. Joshua took personal responsibility for the defeat. Hence his repentance. The moment something has happened and they were refused, surely God. What was that you have done? God will know that you are a good guy. But you give me the very short breath. What was that supposed to do? Now, <laughs> that's not called repentance. That's called excuses. Let's be clear. God never gives forgives excuses. The moment you have a defense, stay with it. Don't even put a hand to God. The only way you to repent is to acknowledge your sin. Joshua knows even if the devil was behind the defeat, God allowed it. The only God is in this also. And so he knows, and the only way God will do it because it happened, there is a sin in their life. Never assume my sister, you are on your way, you are on your own, ever. Even in trouble, God is still there. Even though they have been defeated, he saw God's presence was still there because God allowed it. Whatever the circumstances, please recognize you are not on your own. God is with you. Do not bother that, do, do not bother that others led you to sin. Repent your own part. I agree, the girl had a very short rest and she called the girl a sister here. How would you have known? And then she had this short dress. And then the way she sat in your room, you are What would a man do? Now, my friend, you are not concentrating on the wrong thing. You should have taken the Joseph King. You know that Joseph is the man of the Lord? You know the Joseph King? He left his clothes with the pearls and wine and you go. You know the story of it. So you, when you're so happy like that, how come you are still in your house? Now, you need to know the law. The moment you start looking for excuses, it may be true they are contribution to the error, but not the error. If you do them in God, I will bring them at the devil. You are the child of God. Who was your contribution in it? And so, when sin comes, the usual, clear, easy thing is to look for defense, look for excuses. That's not repentance. Joshua admitted they had actually sinned and he was part of the sin. Look at verse 9. The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and will surround us and wipe out all our way from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? No, Joshua was not that leading so that we get new land. It is that the process would bring glory to God. And tell you God, I know you are sinned, but your name is also an issue. If you need to glorify God, my sister, then it will bother you that your failure or that you are seen is going to be associated with the God you have claimed as your God. Yet you know he never fails himself. Look at what I see people giving death money and I wish they can they can hide it. You just see how they are living, they are stealing money, they are corrupt, but they want to have a hallelujah, I love the Lord. I say, surely, how do you want God to be associated with your corruption? Can you be a better 
much and let's go to Chef say, no, 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 we have no trouble to your name. We have no trouble to your name. So when we are leaving, you know, sometimes somebody annoys you. And you tell I'll give you a piece of your or my mind. I can give you a piece of your mind. What do you think you are doing to God's name and his glory? And of course, I keep making a joke. When you keep giving a piece of your mind to others, you will soon be empty head. But it's critical to understand we are talking about sin tonight. And we are saying the thing that can motivate you not to see is number one, to stop God's presence everywhere. Number two, to know that you live your life for his glory, not for self-protection or self one of the religions. When that is what is driving you, my brother, everything that God will not stop helping you. He will help you. But every time you want to you are to find your vision, you remember what it will do to God's will. The book of Romans chapter 2 says, the name of the Lord that will be with you because of you. You know what? We claim to be Christian, but we live differently. And those people are very helpful, if not now, when they are in school. And they know you are not living a life consistent with what the Bible says. Who is, what are you doing that God says? Ah, salvation, surely. You know, I still remember being in that because I was talking with the managers, some years gone by, and they said, you know, when you hear your cashier say they are saved, watch out. I said, I was very offended. Say, no, 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 no. It's called Kifunga Macho. The moment he he wants to go to your eyes. Because the moment he is now say you no longer go out to do car checks, you no longer go out, by the time this car gets done, you are done, you are bound to be empty. So whenever you hear somebody say they are saved, watch out what they want to to steal. I found that very negative. Do you think such money that can get and will be saved because of this Christian? And by the time you confront them, they said, yeah, I approved too. They were bad, but they got saved. Two years later, they disappeared in the medium. Then I assumed there was an error. I employed another. This one was a with a woman. And then she said to her, I was so impressed because my mother is also saved. Uh uh, I've come to a conclusion. Whenever you hear someone say they are saved, watch out. It's about to really a distribute to God's name. Would you agree with me? It's a terrible thing. And uh, this seed, that's what sin does. My prayer is that God will help me and help you to have one reason to be alive, to bring glory to God. And that your own self-interest is a, self, is a distant second because what matters is God in your life. You know the church suffers because of the conduct of its own, of its own people. And I hope you are not listening to me either online or here physically. And there are areas where you are very important in the things of God. But in part of your area, you are giving a wrong testimony. Sorry, I have to find a way of finishing. Look at verse 416. The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up! What do you see down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have corrupted my covenant. Which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of their devoted things, they have stolen, they have lied, they have put them in, in they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their back and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you and with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. You know, God is very clear to Joshua, sin separates us from him. You cannot have God's presence at the same time you receive. And the moment he presence with God, you also lose his favor. You know, here, the sin that is this regret is multiple. There was a lie, there was stealing, and then there was misuse of the water things. I hear in industry they call it misappropriation of funds. And misappropriation is very interesting. The people actually are jailed and they never told. Because misappropriation is not stealing. It is that money was allocated in the budget to do this. Then you 
wanted to do this. That's my preparation because we can believe that. Way. But the moment you are discovered, you are being but you have no money. You are not you you will not use money. I took all that into that. You raise money, you tell people you are raising money to go for a mission to Kazi. Then you realize one of the factors salary is not yet paid. So you take the money, you know what you take the money that was meant to go to Kazi for your pastor. That is called Mr. Prophet for all. And you are a canon, you are a maker. I'm not going to get it. How many times have you told your husband or your or your boss or your parents to give you something for asking and they give you? Then you look at the differently and don't even tell them. I don't know what they can be. He did not see anybody in property. It is that that a particular idea was meant to be banned. This is why he came out of the body. He took it for use. Misappropriation. In this way, are you involved in sin? And then you look at him. But you don't do what you say. You say you do something, you do the opposite. And you don't even go to tell the person who has told who you have targeted me. You know, I hear a woman talk about that. See, not really bad people may necessarily be listening to me. But I hear some women say, hey, you must put money for the rainbow. Do you? It's not praying for you. Now, so when it comes, will you be surprised after you have even committed yourself to the uh, rainy day coming? Because the truth is, your husband is not aware that the money is lost. What happened to you? I no, no, somewhere, I don't know what's wrong with you. You saw what he said. Now, what you are not admitting, you have kept the money for a rainy day. That's called misappropriation. And my friend, my sister, you are not, you are not on your way to heaven. You are from, on your way somewhere else. And somehow that you the same. They, they like, they like the general budget. And they allow money to be budgeted for certain day. Then they go to find the right back and use it differently from their big budget. The sin was a sin that annoyed God. But the critical thing that I can say earlier is disobedience. Still with that, but it's still from God. It was. Because it, it's God who says this is right with his gold, but don't cut it. Jericho, these were set apart for destruction. How could you steal God's property, which he wanted to destroy? Look at that, that thing. God consecrates the people. Joshua is told, tell them, consecrate yourself in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. They are devoted things that are, that are things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. So they are prepared for, to meet God tomorrow. Achan must have had this announcement. <laughs> we are going to be about everybody. Yet he opted to wait until he is destroyed. Because in the world is higher, you mean God discovered Joshua, here they are. You know, once you get the spirit conviction, the best thing is to repent. Don't wait for things to be worse. For waiting is likely to happen in your heart. And it makes it easier for you to do even worse sins. And of course what follows is actual destruction. Let's be clear. A Christian can fall in sin. Not can. 1 John 1, 8 and 9 is saying, is saying if you if you see. That means not when you see, if you see. It means it's possible for a Christian to see. And if that happens, he gives you the way out. So let's be clear. We are not suggesting that Christians never fall in sin. The word of God is clear. That's possible. However, Christians do not walk in sin. We can fall in sin, but not walk in sin. What's the difference? You, you, you have done wrong, the devil convicts you, and like a computer, you have run the password of the Holy Spirit. So if you are, why that has not been, even the pastor did the last one. Now, with the discussion, not pastor is you. So you have run it. 
when you are running and do some work in addition to yesterday, and do another thing in addition to, uh, to this, you are now not falling in sin. You are walking in sin. You know what I'm saying? To ask anybody not to help us to fly over their head, it's a kind of problem. You can't stop us flying over somebody's head. Oh, stop us by how the bus will fly over your head. Surely that will be possible. But surely, sister, if I say you start to go there, don't allow the bus to make a nest in your head. Surely that must be impossible. Because by the time the bus is making a nest, you can, you can test it. Am I right? That's exactly the same thing with the sin. You can fall in sin, but the, if you truly accept the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk in sin. And to walk in sin is simply to choose the way of rebellion. Verse 14 is saying, in the morning present yourself tribe by tribe. The Lord chooses, the, the, the tribe the Lord chooses shall come forth, come by come. The clan that the Lord chooses shall come family by family. The family the Lord chooses shall come man by man. Verse 15. Whoever is caught with the devoted things shall be destroyed by fire, along with all that belongs to him. He has violated the covenant of the Lord and has done an outrageous thing in Israel. What are you learning? Cannot hide from God. No, in fact, the pastor may be saying, the sister so and so, she's such a blessing to the Lord. Nobody knows about the things you do secretly. Secret sin is sweet. Because you continue having a good education, you continue, but you see, you are dealing with God. Now keep laughing your churches. If a girl gets pregnant, the whole church wants to show her as an example. She's thrown out of the youth. Yet there are other people in the youth group who are sleeping, but they are using colors. Now, my friend, the age pregnancy is not a sin. It's not a sin. It's a blessing. But sleeping with somebody you're not married to, is that okay, eh? the sin? So that if we find a way of sin is being caught. So if, if I'm not caught, I used to have a not running gadget and I was not caught. So I'm not here, I'm not here. No, that's righteousness, that's not righteousness. That's just that the fact that not been caught. Here, Achan lands. He had healed them so well. Nobody would ever catch him. But the Lord, you can't hide from him. So if there is a secret sin, you are your own deed. Please take Achan as an example. Go and repent. Go and sort it out. Because he knows. It doesn't matter that Nana doesn't know. It's irrelevant. Holiness is not about Nana. Nana has his own sins to repent. It's between you and God. And that's really what you need to do. You will see, you are seeing what will find you out. You know, one of the things I found very interesting is that as I've counseled young people, you God tells you who have gotten pregnant, it is not my problem, brother Nana. I agree it was. What happened? It sounds like when a Christian girl who had been like yesterday tried even once, it's like the, 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 the devil was supervising. The girl gets pregnant. The girl gets HIV. And then he doesn't even know about it. He doesn't know. She already met once. My friend, don't try even once. That's what we are learning here. As I go to our finishing, let's look at um, what is done in secret is finally exposed. Verse 19 says, Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Now he has been identified. Now there was nothing to hide. You know, integrity is living your life so you do not worry if there is a hidden camera around your home. And, so, and that somebody subsequently can take the thing and offer it to one of the national TV stations. And you see yourself on national news at 9 p.m. It doesn't matter. Why? You live your life for God. For the audience of one. Please understand what is done in secret is finally exposed. The other thing I am saying in verse 20, Achan replied, It is true, 
I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. He confessed. This is what they done. When I saw in the thunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent and with the silver underneath. He has confessed. But his confession did not save him. He was still destroyed. He was doing too little too late. My friend, let's be clear. <laughs> God is patient. But the time will come. And let's go. A friend of mine just this week just woke up in the morning and was about to move on. And just went just in front of the door. And my brother is gone. God did not want him to feel sick or zero. So he just went out and didn't rise up. So you know that you cannot allow what the Holy Spirit is talking about even now as I talk to you. Don't think you're so bad tomorrow. God will really forgive you, but you must confess to me. You must repent. Please understand that crying after you are caught is not called repentance. I'm not going to give you. So you need to come to where you don't have to be caught. You have that thing. And we are going to repent. I finish looking back to the two. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with a silver and me. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Do not be an accomplice to sin, is what I discover here. If you say to us, you know, he, the, the, all the people died, his family. Why? There is no way he could have been going at the knee without the help knowing. The children of the soul are hiding them. The very fact that the father is hiding means he knows there is something wrong. They are just caught. When death came, it did not just come to the thief, it just also came to the people watching. Are you going to the point? I need to ask yourself, are you happy with your life with me? They are in sin. Say, no, 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 we are not in sin. You know, if you say that a sinner, I saw him do it, but me, I cannot do it. But I understand him. Please understand where he is coming from. My friend, let me tell you, any time the other person's sin is understandable, you are one step towards of doing it. Because what is understandable of him, even if you can do it because of your COD, understandable. Some of the people say, but I'm a man. Why do you expect me to well, I'm a man, but I'm a woman. How do you expect the moment you say that I'm a man? It means I'm not a Christian. Because Christians are not just men. They are people who are always saying it's occupying their lives. That's why we are given in Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the spirit. And then we are given in verse 19, the fruit of the evil one. If the evil one is not in you, you don't feel like you are the evil one. So my friend, don't say, but I'm a man. No, you are not the of the status of your husband. They are not the status of your husband. If you are saved yourself, don't go to the house like that. You are in a different level. You know, Akan family must have seen him, but they said nothing. Do not be an accomplice to sin. You will be seen as part of it. Who is it that you are involved with? You are not the one, it's them. Don't be like Akan's family. You know, sin must be punished. That was about 24 and 25, they say, then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Ake and some of them, the silver, the throne, everything. And they say, Joshua said, why have you brought to trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you. Then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Wow! They wanted to see them gone. If you know that, then, you do not complain about the consequence of your sin. So you cannot abort, for example, in order to cover up sin. In other words, the woman, the woman, you know what I've done is wrong. Even if you get pregnant, you can't afford because you are ready to do your sin. The woman is not to have higher consequences. There is a possibility you are not sorry for your sin. People who are sin say, yes, I'm guilty charge. Take me to jail. Do whatever you want. You will feel ready for whatever. And you wait for the masses of God. Because you know you deserve otherwise. You know, society must not allow impunity if you want God's favor on the society. These, the Israelites, came together and obeyed God. 
some are relatives of Ekan. That's why jails are important. You cannot allow people to continue doing wrong and say nothing about it. No, I don't have to, I don't have to report them, I tell you my relative. No, you have become a partaker of the sin. And then Singapore became a part of nation within one generation. How? By becoming ruthless with corrupt people. Irrespective of their seniority. I think that's what God was teaching in Akan's story. We finish with verse 26. Over Akan, they heaped a large pile of rocks which remain to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Arca since. Why put a whole pile on a person? Maybe so that everyone who passes there remembers Akan and sin, remembers how God hates him, remembers not to be able to act to pay a partaker with others who are sinning. You know, maybe you, you used to be an alcoholic. You cannot live like you don't know how that is to you. Even if they give you a communion in, in, um, in using wine, let it pass or have your own water. If you know you normally have a sex problem, even if you can see other people embracing out of the church, greet them with their own hand. After all now, these days with the, with, the, with, the, with the COVID, you can tell them COVID. But the important thing, you can't do what others are doing. You know your weaknesses, am I right? You can't do just what others are doing. You know yourself. If you into sexual sin before, avoid even embracing. And I think that will be very important. We have run out of time. But I hope in the time we have, three things have come out. Number one, that God hates sin. Number two, that although we can fall in sin, you cannot have a choice for walking in sin. And number three, that God's favor leaves you the moment you choose the way of sin. Let us pray. I want to give you a moment to pray for yourself. What do you hear the Lord say? Which area is he pointing out? Is there something he say, that is the area I want my daughter, my son, I want him to go in this room before he sort of dies, to repent. If you are saying by the moon, I have heard God's voice, not the woman's voice, God's voice. As you pray and close this meeting, please remember me in prayer. Just put up your hand. You are showing it to God that you truly want His intervention and His forgiveness. Just put up your hand. Once I see it, you put it down. So that I close, I remember in prayer. Just put it high enough to run as you put the hand down. Anybody else? You are saying, yes, I need God's touch. Anybody else? Yeah, the Lord bless you. I'll see that also. Anybody else? The Lord bless you. I'll see that hand. Anybody else? Lord Jesus. You can see the hands of the ones that are present here. And even the hearts of the ones that are listening online. Pray that tonight we will remember because of how you suffer on the cross. You will have prayed for our sins. That all we need is to admit them. And then they put up their hand and admit them. And seek you your forgiveness. Lord, I pray that Lord will forgive them. That they will not walk out of here with guilt. Because they know, surely they have been guilty, but they are now forgiven. But also give them the power to walk in righteousness and strength. Whether those listening to me online or those who are here, may they experience your goodness and a life of victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus. Yes.